Uh, welcome, everyone, to our uh, workshop and presentation on using Rapid to map open data. Uh, I'm Jeff Underwood, and presenting with me today is Yunzi Lin, Ben Clark, and Dean Kinsock. Uh, today, we're going to talk uh, about a few things. Uh, first, like what mapping at Facebook, what was Facebook doing in OSM? Uh, then do Rapid and JOSM, map with AI, uh, our Esri ArcGIS dataset integration with Rapid, and then finally using Rapid with the hot task manager. And uh, once we conclude, we'll uh, transition back to the lounge and we'll talk, uh, we'll have an open Q&A session for anyone that wants to ask us anything and uh, we'll, we'll just chat and do some mapping. All right, uh, take it away, Yunzi. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, I'm Yunzi. I'm a QA analyst at Facebook. Um, so why does Facebook care about maps? So the answer is simple. We have maps in a lot of our products, like marketplace, crisis response, uh, recommendations, check-ins, and so on. And OSM is the major data source on our map. Therefore, since 2017, uh, we developed technology of AI-assisting role mapping and established teams to actively map on OSM. So far, our role mapping project uh, covered Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, India, and Tanzania. But we are not just working on adding data to OSM. We have also actively contributed to fix improper data on OSM, especially in the last year, with the improvement of our vandalism and profanity detection technique, we're able to fix over 360 samples of vandalism and 16 instances of profanities on feature names all over the world on OSM. Here are a couple of examples. This one, um, we detected as a vandalism. Uh, of the weight name values. As you see, the name values in proprietor. Uh, and further investigated, we decided to remove the name tag. And we submitted the training set with the removal. Um, this is sample is similar. Uh, the name value here is improper. So remove the name tag uh, after further investigation on this building. And this one is related to Pokemon Go added, which is normally considered as vandalism. Also, with further in investigation, uh, we moved this name tab of the features on the map. And when a profanity were involved in the name, we will flag this map feature as profanity features. With further investigation, we also find out the polygon itself is invalid on the map. So we end up removing the entire feature, including names from OSM. And for this one, um, profanity is, is, is in part of the name. So remove the profanity part, but still keep the part, the legit part to align with the row surrounding uh, in this area. And this one very similar, we also detected the profanity named on these water bodies. So remove this name tag of the water body. But we also notice there's drag nail is this on the row near the lake. So we submit a separate training set to remove the drag node. It shows on the next slide. This is a training set, remove the drag node. So we also enhance our detection on broken relations um, and repair over 4,100 relation OSM. Oftentimes, these repaired relations, they are as complicated as the example here and it sits on live OSM for quite a while. So we're very proud of to do all these repairing on the relation. And other than using improved internal technique, we apply an open source validation tools called Atlas Track to detect various data issues, including line crossing water body improperly, name gap in connected roads, missing relation type, overlapping rates, and so on. We submitted more than 7.9K chain set to repair over 122K OSM features. For example, this one is from the Atlas track called Light Crossing Water Body. It shows that there's a highways improperly overlap with part of the water body. And for the investigating, we notice the water body is a bit out of date. So we adjust the water body to avoid its overlapping with roads. These are another examples from the light crossing water body track. So we know that we find out uh, this highway crossed the river polygons improperly without the bridge tag. 
So we add it by splitting up a segment of the row and add the bridge tag information. So we can avoid, so we can bring this uh, highway properly across this water, this river polygon. And this one is from the Atlas track called uh, Row Name Gap. Um, you can see this bridge here, it was uh, split it and added later than the rest of the row. So there's a name gap happens there. What we do is we add the name back to this bridge so we can have a continuous continuous name on this highway. So for Atlas, um, we use MatRelay as the platform to systematically fix Atlas tracked outputs on OSM. Um, and we are not limited to present all this Atlas track to our internal team. We also share a couple ones to OSM community in early April. So if anyone is interested in support these Atlas track fixes on MetRelate, please feel free to message us on Slack or email us on osmfacebook.com. This is Mapping as Facebook. Now I will pass to Ben to talk about Rapid and Johnson. Thank you. Great. Thanks. So most of the folks here are probably familiar with ID, which is sort of the default uh, OpenStreetMap editor that's browser-based. Um, and I'm just going to take you through sort of the evolution of what Facebook has done uh, with ID and uh, also with our JOSM plugin. Uh, but this will be a pretty quick uh, little section. Uh, but don't worry, there'll be plenty of time afterwards for you to get your feet wet with using uh, the rapid uh, UI that we've created. So um, go ahead and... Uh, on next. Yeah, so we'll start with an Esri data set. These are straight from the ArcGIS website. And so this is something that you can go navigate to right now. Um, and what's cool is that um, up until recently, um, we have had a really good ch uh, chance to sort of work with Esri and integrate all of these data sets uh, directly within the tooling chain that Facebook has created with both a JOSM plugin and with an add on to Rapid, which is a clone of ID. Go ahead and hit next. And once more. Yeah. So uh, on the left, you have ID. And then um, after Facebook cloned ID and, and forked the project, we added some of our own road and building detections on top of it. These are global and they're predicted from satellite imagery. So in cases, they're not um, perfectly aligned and there are some, some issues occasionally with uh, geometry. So we went looking for a way to get um, better, like human approved uh, data, uh, so called authoritative data sets. And Esri has that kind of data in spades. So, this third thing here uh, is where we worked with Esri to add even more functionality to Rapid to complement our global data sets that are predicted from satellite imagery. Uh, we have this third data type that is um, authoritative data that may come from uh, NGOs or municipalities, uh, for like example, a, a county building data set or an address list. Uh, go ahead. And we'll show you this is ID. Um, so this should be familiar to many of you. Um, and next, you will see what the same thing looks like with our uh, predicted buildings and road layers looks like. And next, you will see sort of a, a walkthrough of what um, our new Esri data story looks like. So you can hit next a couple more times. We've got this data set thing that you can open up. You can pick from these data sets. Uh, and then once you have selected a data set, you can uh, clearly see over in the left that we've got all the, the tagging and addressing that comes to us from Esri. Um, it's just built right into the tool. So a lot less time spent dealing with tags. And you can also tell that some of the geometry is like seriously excellent. You can see that huge building uh, over to the right, which our AI predictions may not be able to be quite so accurate with. Um, so it's it's really quite a nice uh, update to our uh, capabilities. And um, these slides are actually a little bit dated. So we have a new UI that we actually just released about a week ago that you'll get a chance to look at later in this session. Um, and next, we'll talk a little bit about JOSM. Um, and so we have our uh, JOSM plugin, which we internally refer to uh, as Jump. Uh, and basically, uh, same deal here. You can look. This is the, the stock uh, JOSM. UI, and if you load the Map with AI plugin, which is available on the JOSM plugin site, then you get the same sort of story. You can load all of our uh, AI predicted buildings, and roads, and also use uh, the JOSM plugin's new Esri integration functionality. And as I said, we'll have plenty of time to, to go over this in a little bit. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll hand things over uh, to Jeff. 
Thanks, Ben. So I want to talk a little bit about Map with AI. Uh, ben, you know, touched on it a little bit that we launched Rapid with uh, road predictions, and uh, Yunzi had mentioned that we've been mapping uh, many of these countries using the same road predictions. So what exactly are these? Uh, if, in Rapid, if you've never used it, if you jump into the world anywhere that's missing, that's not completely mapped, you, you'll see many uh, pink roads like this. And all of these are AI predictions, actually. Uh, so how, how do we do this exactly? Well, it starts with a global data set for training data. We, we literally sample uh, all over the world from OSM. We use over a million uh, one kilometer squared tiles of road data, uh, evenly spread in terms of where data is. And we fed that to our machine. And so that, that's our, our prediction uh, data set. And that massive amount of data lets us actually have a very robust model. And so we can basically uh, run imagery from anywhere in the world and get a really solid result for predictions. And that allows us to, to you know, have rapid available everywhere in the world. So, so what does this look like at a very high level? Well, we take training data and satellite imagery, and we feed that to a machine. And that gives us our road predictions. Uh, our, our machine learning is a type called deep learning. Uh, and we take this prediction result, and it's basically a picture. And it needs to be turned into line data. So that's our next step. But and that line data is, is just kind of on its own to start with. We then have to merge it with OSM itself. And finally, that lets us edit it with Rapid, submit it to OSM, and, and view it on the data once people decide to upload. We, of course, have a, uh, a quality assurance pipeline that, that is going on in the background of all of this. Every time we generate data, we take a look at it, and we see what we can do better. And uh, you know, we've been at this for about five years now, and uh, you know, we've made improvements uh, consistently throughout time. The, the technology only matures. So you know, this is uh, just words, pretty abstract. So let's take a look at this uh, visually. So we start at this area. Uh, I believe this is in India. Here's uh, some satellite imagery from Maxar. And we run this through our machine. And what we get back is something like this. This is, uh, in actuality, a black and white, or black and pink in this case, image with road predictions. And you'll see that they are of varying widths and uh, thicknesses. Like here, you might see that there's actually a little bit of a weak spot. And if we go back, you can see there's actually tree cover here. I mean, you know, trees and buildings obscuring roads are, are one of the reasons that our prediction can fail sometimes or be, be weaker, because there's just nothing visually to confirm that there's a road. So going back to the, the black part, you'll, you'll see that there's lots of predictions that are stronger or weaker than others. And, and that, that's for lots of reasons. Sometimes it's because it's not a road, but it looks vaguely road-like. Sometimes it's because there's coverage. Uh, but what we get is a, is a very strong prediction for much of the road. But this is ultimately just a picture, and we can't map with just the picture automatically. We'd have to turn this into line data. And that's that's a very big task, actually. Uh, and turning uh, these predictions into vector data has been the ongoing project of Map with AI for, for years. The, the machine learning itself matured quite a while ago. But all the improvements we make nowadays are, are generally from vectorization. Like, how do we make better intersections? How do we make better geometry? You know, how smooth should a road be? How many nodes should it have? And these are really hard questions, actually, because you change one thing and it breaks other things. So you know, once we've done this process, though, we, we just have vectors. But if we take a look at OSM in this area, here's OSM, we have a road running through this area. It's already been mapped. We don't need to make that, we don't need to present that to the user. We don't need to, to deal with this road. We need to conflate away our duplicates. So that's the last step. We conflate away, we add tagging, and finally, what we present to users in Rapid is this, which is a missing roads layer that will connect to this OSM roads. It has intersections with it. And uh, it makes mapping just a, a super easy thing. Uh, here's our coverage. We, again, like I said, we, we have coverage almost in the entire world. So it's, it's very easy just to pick up and go with Rapid. If you want to map somewhere, just open the tool and, and zoom in. Uh, and you will probably be able to use it. Uh, in addition, uh, Microsoft has a AI building data set, and that's available in the US, Canada, Australia, Tanzania, and Uganda. Uh, so that's a, another AI data set that we have available in Rapid. But uh, the thing we're really excited about today is our Esri data sets uh, that have been made available in this newer version of Rapid that uh, Dean's going to talk about now. So take it away, Dean. All right, thank you. 
if you can unshare, then I can share my screen. There we go. All right, can you see my screen okay? Yep. Great. Uh, so thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I wanted to talk a bit about some of the work that we've been doing with Facebook to integrate ArcGIS data sets into Rapid so it can be added into OpenStreetMap. So uh, Esri's goal in this is to help improve the quality of OpenStreetMap by providing easier access to authoritative data sets that are available from the GIS community. Most of these authoritative GIS organizations, such as a city or a county or a national mapping agency, are using Esri software called ArcGIS to build and manage their data. So there's a lot of data in ArcGIS format that's accessible for use in this type of application. Uh, many of these organizations are already openly sharing their data through things like the ArcGIS Hub or Esri Community Maps program. And many of these organizations would like to see their data integrated into OpenStreetMap, but they just don't have the resources to do that work themselves. So Esri is looking to help facilitate the sharing of the data from these GIS organizations, this GIS community, to the OSM community. So how can we help with doing that? Well, first, we can promote the value of doing that, You know, the value of having this type of data integrated into OpenStreetMap. Uh, we make that data available to the ArcGIS community, uh, so many of them benefit directly that way. But they are also motivated just to see their data used more widely in their local community. And then we can also help them enable the sharing of that data through our platform. And then once they've done that, there's some additional things we can do. One, uh, we like to uh, ensure that the data they're sharing is uh, open and compatible with the OSM ODBL license. So we can help validate the compatibility of the open data with the OSM license. And then we can help with the preparation of that data to be integrated into OpenStreetMap. Most of these organizations manage their data in their own custom data model, which is different than what OpenStreetMap expects in its data model. Uh, so there's work to be done by somebody, uh, could be Esri, could be others, to convert the data from its native uh, format, native uh, data model, into the expected OSM data model. So uh, last year at the Esri User Conference in July of 2020, we announced some of this work that we were planning to do with Facebook. And we encouraged our users to begin sharing their data. We have a program called Esri Community Maps where thousands of our user community members are sharing uh, millions, actually hundreds of millions of features with us to go into our platform. And we introduced a new data sharing option where by checking a box, they could give us permission to share share that data beyond our platform with other mapping platforms, specifically including OpenStreetMap. And then we talked about how that data would become available through an enhanced version of the Rapid Editor that would support ArcGIS. So that was about 10 months ago that we did that. So flash forward to kind of where we were last fall, we had an OSM uh, Connect event where we introduced some of these new tools in preview mode, and we had a sampling of data sets that were available at the time. You can see on the map about a dozen or so data sets that we had integrated uh, as we kicked off this program. And then if we kind of flash forward to today, oops, you can see that there's now uh, dozens of data sets that are available in Rapid for use within ArcGIS and within the editor. So let me go over to my screen here. Now let's take a quick look at this. So <clears throat> I'm now over in ArcGIS Online and we're looking at an open street map, map uh, kind of in middle America. I think this is Downingtown, uh, Pennsylvania. And I can see on this map, I'm gonna zoom into a residential area. Looking at OSM, I can see it's lacking uh, some data in this area, but looking at the relief behind that, I can see that there's actually probably a development area in here. I can see kind of what looks like a residential community. If I turn on the imagery, I can confirm that and see, yeah, there's a pretty large uh, residential area with roads and buildings that aren't being currently mapped. If I look at the Esri map that we have for this area, I can see that there are a number of buildings that are in the Esri map that aren't in the open uh, street map map at this point. So I can kind of toggle between them. So several dozen features in this one little area. 
So this is data that's been contributed to us through the Esri Community Maps program. So Chester County, Pennsylvania uh, was one of our contributors that did opt in to sharing their data. So we now have access to their buildings and addresses. So if I turn on their, their buildings layer, you can now see that there's a large number of building features that exist in this, in this part of the country. And if I click on a building, I can see a little bit of attribute information. In this case, it's pretty sparse. I have a building tag with just a value of yes, and then I have the state information, but the buildings themselves didn't have a lot of information. Well, there's another data set that Chester County provides, uh, which is address information. And you can see that there's a bunch of address points that in most cases overlap nicely with these building footprints. And if I click on an address point, you can see there's more detailed information, the house number, the street name, the town, uh, state, and so forth, postal code. And one minor thing that I wanted to call your attention to, if I compare, let me do it over here. If I compare the attribution, you'll notice that for this address point, let me turn this layer on click this one here. You can see in our street data, we have Westerham RD, the abbreviation, um, which is not the OSM convention. OSM prefers to have uh, street types and suffixes spelled out. So as part of the conversion of the data from the native data model into the OSM data model, we're doing small things like that, converting the values of road names to be what's expected in OSM. So this is a pretty good example of some features that could be added into uh, OSM through ArcGIS uh, data sets. So we do have a compiled list of all these ArcGIS data sets that are now available on the OSM wiki. So you can kind of scroll through this page and get a sense for the different communities that are available and then the status for them. Some of them are available for the community to review. Some have been reviewed and are available to preview. And then some have been previewed and they're now available to edit. For a little simpler version of this list, we have a live web app that you can link to, and it takes you to uh, this application. So this application shows you the locations of all these communities, and then it has information on their status. So all these kind of uh, pink, uh, tri uh, pink triangle square areas are showing the different communities that are available for editing. So I wanted to do a little editing in the Colorado area using a couple data sets. So one is the United States addresses data set from the USDOT, the National Address Database, uh, which was made available uh, by the USDOT as a public domain data set. And then I can see that there's several communities in Colorado that are available. The one I was gonna work on is in Aurora, Colorado. So for any one of these communities, I can click, find out its status, its license information, I can also then click through to a link on the wiki page where I can read more about it. And then if I actually wanna interact with the data, maybe download the data to check out um, in my local environment before mapping, I can do that from here. And then what we do is take all of those layers that we've, we've published and we share them through this group in ArcGIS Online that has all of the different data sets organized by types like buildings or addresses and then this group is queried by the Rapid Editor to bring these features into Rapid to go into OSM. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go into Rapid. So I've got a version of Rapid here that I'm interacting with. This is what Ben was showing earlier. So I'm going to click the Rapid button. And in addition to the, the Facebook roads that Jeff was describing from the ML predictions and some Microsoft buildings that Microsoft has developed uh, from uh, ML predictions, AI predictions, there's this new option to add and manage data sets. So if you click that, you'll see a collection of these ArcGIS data sets that are coming from this group that I showed earlier. So this is being updated continuously. Anytime we add a new data set, it'll imme immediately appear within this gallery. And you can do some filtering in this uh, new user interface. So I can look for some data sets that are featured. I know one of the data sets I wanna use is this United States addresses and this feature, so I'm gonna add that. And then I wanna work with some buildings as well. So I'm gonna to go to buildings, and I know I wanna work in Colorado, so I'll start typing Colorado, and I can find this Aurora data set. So I'm gonna add that data set to the map. So I've added two data sets, and I'm gonna work with these uh, specific ones. 
So for Aurora, I'm going to work in this area. I'm going to center my map there. We're going to try to zoom in to Aurora. And we're looking at some imagery. I think in this case, we're looking at the Bing imagery. And I'm going to zoom into an area where you can start to see some features appearing on the map. So here you can see in green these Aurora buildings that are available, and then in yellow, these address points. And earlier today, I, I did a couple edits. You can see these three buildings have been added. They're in red. That means they've been part of OSM already, but these other ones have not been. So I'm going to add a couple more of these buildings. So how does that work? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can click on a feature and select you can kind of preview the attributes like we looked at before. If you want to use this feature, you can just select that option. And I can select another building next to it. You can also use the A key just to quickly select that. So I'm going to work with these two buildings here. So I can I can see that the geometry looks pretty good. It's aligning quite nicely. It uh, doesn't look like there's many extraneous points. But if I want to confirm that, I can use this square feature. And if there's any extraneous points, it'll clean that up for me. And then I'll do the same thing here. That also looks pretty good, but I'm gonna square this off just to make sure it looks good. And if I wanted to, I could move this feature a little bit uh, to relocate it more precisely if I felt like it needed to move, but that actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it like that. So I've got these two buildings, but all I know now is that they're building, yes. Uh, so I can select both of these. I can pretty much tell from the imagery that these are houses. So I'm gonna go change the type to house. So I've added a little extra value than what came in the data set. And I can see these address points are available here too. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Um, I can preview the address information. I'm going to use this feature. So you can see in addition to the building information, now we have the city, the house number, the postal code, the state, the street. I can see that the street name matches the street name in OSM. So all of that looks good. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with this other feature. Use this. I can see it's got the same street name. It's got a different house number than the street next to it. All that looks good as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use those. But in this case, what I want to do is add the address point to the building rather than make it a separate point. I like to join the address information. To do, so to do that, I can select both features and then push the C button. And it'll automatically conflate that. So now my house building feature has been updated to have the address information that came from the address point. And I can do the same thing for the other feature. Select those two, press C, and it's conflated those things together. So now you can see I've got two features, two buildings with addresses now, and they're up here. So I can go ahead and save these features. A couple of buildings in Aurora, Colorado. And I'm going to go ahead and upload that to the map. So uh, that is now uploading those edits that I've made to OpenStreetMap. And we have another map. Earlier, I edited a few features that I mentioned. And they're showing up in this live feature layer from, from ArcGIS Online. So if all things are working properly in a minute or two, those features will also appear in these live feature layers. But while that's happening, let me go back quickly to my slides. Kind of how this works. Let me explain a little bit about what's going on uh, behind the scenes. So we have this kind of multi-step process for getting data into this ArcGIS data sets, for onboarding them. I'm going to quickly step through it. So the first thing is identifying data. So we're looking for data that would be useful, of high quality, and compatible with the OSM license. So we check to see whether these feature uh, features would add value to OSM. Are they missing in OSM? Are they the type of data that OSM would like to see? Are they of good quality and accuracy? Do they come with a compatible license? All of the data shared through Community Maps has got a very much compatible license. It's explicitly uh, designed for use in OSM. We then can obtain the latest version of the source data, uh, analyze the source data. Maybe it's too detailed and it needs to be generalized or thinned. Uh, we might need to transform the field names and values like I described before, converting it into OSM tags, applying the correct values. Then we publish that processed data into an ArcGIS feature layer in ArcGIS Online. 
We document the data on the wiki, and then we share it with the community. The community then has an opportunity to review it. They can discover it on the wiki. Uh, they can download the data if they'd like to work with it. They can add comments on the wiki page if they see any issues with it. If issues are reported, uh, we'll review those and refine the data set if necessary. And then we'll add it into Rapid in preview mode so it can be integrated uh, and tested that way. And then if it looks good and there are no remaining issues, um, we consider that community approval to proceed and we'll go ahead and share it so that anyone can access that data in the editor. And then at that point, it's available for anybody to use within Rapid uh, like I was using a minute ago. So in terms of opportunities to participate, uh, there's a few ways. Pretty much at each of these steps, there are opportunities for the OSM community. Uh, one, if you have any recommendations for data sets you'd like to see included, you could help identify those. Uh, there's been several recommendations we've seen, like Johns Creek, Georgia, uh, saw a presentation like this, and they reached out to me through this OSM at Esri.com alias and volunteered their data. So now it's available. Uh, you can also help us prepare data. So if you know of data that would be available and you'd like to help prepare it into an OSM format, you can do that. Um, and if you'd like to help publish that data to online, uh, you can also reach out to us via email. We can set you up with an ArcGIS account if you don't have one for free, and then you could use it to publish the data. Uh, once the data has been published, uh, you're more than welcome to help us review the data, make sure it's gonna be compatible for OSM from a technical perspective. Um, and then once the data is added to OSM and the rapid editors, I should say, you are very much welcome uh, to start adding that data into OSM through those tools. So let me bounce back to my map and you can see those features that we added a couple minutes ago are now appearing in these live feature layers in ArcGIS online. So I can click on those features and I can see all the attribute information that came through. Uh, so you can kind of get the immediate gratification of having live access to this data as feature layers in ArcGIS, as well as having it appear within the OSM base maps over time. So with that, I think I will pass it back to Jeff. All right, great. Um, there was one question during that, uh, which may make sense to address now. It's, uh, is there a recommended way to get data shared? Uh, for example, Mark of a county in Arizona or cities that are in it. Do you email the county city offices uh, concerning the concern mapping? Good question. Yeah, so um, I would say there's a couple ways to do it. You know, if you have a contact at the organization like the county that has the data, uh, feel free to reach out to them directly and encourage them to make the data available. Um, they might be making the data available as open data already. And if they point you to a place where it can be accessed, uh, then you could follow the steps I described, reach out to Esri at osm at esri.com and we can help do that. Or if you don't have a contact at the organization, feel free to just reach out to me through that email alias osm at esri.com. And in most cases, we have relationships with those organizations and we can reach out to them and help facilitate that. We've done that with several dozen organizations. All right, great. Uh, so now I want to move on to uh, briefly just talk about using Rapid with the Hot Tasking Manager. Uh, so, you know, Rapid works great on its own, but uh, especially for some of these big building data sets, maybe you want to do a more systematic or organized editing approach. So how can you do that? Uh, well, luckily there is a custom editor option nowadays in the Tasking Manager, which makes this very easy. Uh, you go to the Edit Project page and find the custom ed editor panel in the sidebar. From there, you can fill in uh, a name and description, and those can be whatever. In this case, Rapid, Rapid Editor. And then all you need to do is stick in a URL. Uh, so in this case, this is our map with AI slash Rapid URL. But if you had your own fork of IDE or your own version of Rapid or, or whatever, you could also stick it in there too. It's, it's actually a, a great little tool that was added in. Uh, mark it as enabled. And then when you return to the settings for your editors, uh, there is a new field now, custom editor. Wrap it. Just check those uh, boxes to enable it and save. And uh, when you then go to actually uh, edit tasks in the task manager, you'll see an additional editor as an option, uh, Rapid. Uh, so it makes it very easy to uh, integrate Rapid into uh, any of your projects. Uh, 
if you are interested in trying out a project that has this enabled, uh, I created one for this event uh, using one of the Esri data sets. Uh, so it's uh, tasks.hotosm.org slash projects slash 10938. And we'll display that again later on. But uh, you can also search map with AI, I think. It'll probably show up. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for a specific thing to work on, you can try that out. Uh, so finally, we just want to talk about uh, what's what's next for for Rapid and Map with AI. Uh, so, you know, we're always thinking about new Esri data sets and data types. Uh, roads and POIs uh, are some of the things we're thinking about now. Uh, we'd love to hear more from all of you when we move up to the lounge. Uh, you know, let us know what you're interested in. There's lots of data out there, um, and it, you know, what you care about will help us prioritize. Uh, we are looking at bring your own data set options. Uh, many people have data and they may want to store it elsewhere or, or you know, use their own uh, systems. And so we're, we're considering how to make that work as well. Uh, performance improvements is something that's been on our mind for a long time. Uh, ID and, and Rapid as well have uh, major performance issues when it comes to like dense urban areas. And we're starting to have lots of data sets in those sorts of areas. So we're, we're thinking about how we can improve that. Of course, model improvements on our AI and uh, of course, and vectorization improvements uh, as well as part of that. We're, we're always looking to make things better, and uh, you know that that's just an ongoing process. Uh, we're considering looking at like sidewalk mapping. How can we use AI or better tooling to make this uh, an easier process for everyone? Uh, you know, pedestrian mapping is kind of like the next big thing on OSM, uh, especially as like roads get mapped out. How how can we make the map better for for users to to walk around with? And uh, that concludes our presentation. Uh, we have some uh, links here, which also show in the lounge. And uh, if you have any questions outside of this, uh, you can also reach us at osm.fb.com. At